souls ain't nothing better than being a Christian going to church. But I look at you and like, well, what's wrong with you? What happened? And then you got to drop your head. Or come up with some kind of flimsy lie. Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't either. Hey, Amen. Now I know what I'm talking about. And uh, so you can't tell something you don't know what you're talking about. But when you know what you're talking about, you can. Okay. And, uh, but I'm glad, thank God, tonight, I don't have to hold my head down to nobody when I walk in the grocery store. I don't have to be afraid I'm going to meet one of my brothers and sisters around the corner and drop my head up. I see him far enough, I can go the other way. <laughs> you said, preacher, does that really happen? It has happened. Oh, yeah. I've seen it, you probably have too. Yep. Yeah, buddy, I've seen him. And, you know, I've seen him, one man, he scared death in the grocery store one time. He looked around the corner, he peeked around the corner. And when he'd see me, he'd dart around. Get over there. The next time I know he'd be up on the other end. I thought, man, I said, this is foolish. I said, I'm going to find that bird. I catch you and I can run you down this way. <laughs> they say, no, I walked around on him and hit him face first. I said, brother, what's wrong with you? I said, am I, am I that bad? Or are you that scared? It ain't me. It was the God that lives in my heart. Amen. The God that lives in my heart. Amen. He knows he was a backslid as a goose. You can run from people, but what is that? You can't run from God. The psalmist said, if I make my bed in hell, he knows where I'm at. Yeah. It don't make no difference if you go out here in the backside of the woods, or up in the mountains. God still knows where you at. Yeah. But you don't think so. You think, well, I can hide from everybody, and I don't have to worry about nobody. But you can't hide from God. Mm -hmm. And I know some people that got consciences that probably have to lock them up in the closet before they can go to sleep. <laughs> that's that's right. Right. Yeah. That's what some of them tell me on them comic books. They said they're so they conscious so they have to lock them up in the closet before they go to sleep. That's bad. But it's good to be here tonight. It really is. I'm glad I, I got this here. Had a good day. One of the days. I trust you have too. And I trust that we'll have a great service and we can go home after a while and say it's been good being in the house of the Lord. You know what, church? Ain't it wonderful to come to church and feel the peace of God, the love of God? Just sit here and feel the peace of God. Glory to the Lord in prayer. Remember those that's lost, bachelor, whatever else. Sick and afflicted. I know Brother Junior said Sister Jeanette's going to come home tomorrow. Well, let's go with that. Remember all my family. We got my family members that just needs to get by with God. Simple as that. And I'm like old Brother Buck in a lot of ways. Now, Brother Buck didn't be right on. And he said it, he said it, he meant it. He said, Brother Scar, I heard a lot of people just need to get right with God. <laughs> That's what he was. Yeah. I said, man. Now, we'll forget standing in the church right for a Bible week with Brother Buck. Took several of us preachers were standing around together. And we got talking about televisions. And uh, you know, back in the day gone by, if you had one of them little one eyed devils in your house, you was a boy, you was a big, you was not right. Mm -hmm. Uh uh. They called them one eyed monsters. <laughs> I've heard him preach so strong, you would, Lord, you wouldn't even want to look at one when you go in the store. <laughs> hey, Amen. Yeah. But anyhow, old brother was standing there talking with us. And, he said, I'll tell you one thing, praise God, brothers. He said, I got four or five of them around the house, but no one of them halfway play. But he said, they didn't talk television to keep you out of the house of God. You didn't need to get brought God in him. That's but that's the way he put it. Yeah. Some people stay home and watch a bit of and show that was their religious yeah. program on Sunday night. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some of them stay home and watch I Love Lucy <coughs> and all that stuff. Anything to keep you coming to church. But anyhow, I'm glad we're here tonight. I'm glad you're here. So we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. How many of you got requests in your hearts? Maybe somebody got outspoken to Chris. If not, they won't lose it to God. Oh, here's one.
any father before he comes to be that father. I was all the time behind me. I was going to be high. So my brother said, I'm going to be high. 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 I'm now God, pray for the service of God. Sick, God. Bless the name of 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 God. Bless the
And I just want them to do it again tonight because uh, it's such a great song. And y'all pray for us, you know. We've been, we've been going around singing in nursing homes. We really do love doing it, and we love love those people. And uh, we're getting a bigger crowd, so, uh, you know, hopefully we can fill that up and they have to get us a bigger room. So uh, y'all pray for us. God says sing, we will sing, brother. Hey, um, y'all just remember seeing your prayers. You know, God always let us do uh, his will. Uh, not our will, not Johnny and Dean and, and Jack's will. You know, it's, it's God's will. Amen. Amen. You know, it's just good that yesterday we did have a pretty much packed house. And we had a good time, you know. And actually had a couple that come in right there at the end. And 
That's why we ended up singing this song twice. It was actually a young lady that actually used to work for me, and she's retired now. And she said, oh, you can sing. I said, well, not really, sis, but you want to hear that song again? She said, yeah, I do. So you know what? God sometimes puts people in the right place just so they can hear words to a song or hear something going on. And it was amazing because I see her a lot up there. And, and uh, you know what's one of the things I never really thought about even about her before I seen her. But you know what? God had her there for a reason. So y'all remember, remember her and your prayers? Her and her husband both were retired from us. And, you know, I know both of them found in the church. So you know what? I told I told you that I love her, Brother Bobby. And I meant that from my heart because... You know, we, if we don't show our love to them on earth right now, while we get while we get a chance, have a chance to get, we're going to be in trouble, Brother Bobby. And that blood's going to be dripping off our hands. So y'all remember us in your prayers, and I do want to dedicate this to you, Brother Bobby. Just like that last one, Brother Bobby, it's got, it's got some power in it, Brother. Yeah. You know, anytime we talk about prayer, you know, yesterday when I asked him at the end, remember we sung this the last song, I asked all of them to have a prayer life, they all raised their hand. I said, my prayer is for each and every one of y'all. I said, because one of these days, you know, there's not going to be one of y'all in a wheelchair. If you're yeah, saved by the grace of the good Lord, they're not going to be in a wheelchair no more, no more Brother Bobby. You know, that's, that's a prayer that we need to all that's pray right. for. These folks are up there, the ones that are tending to them, let's pray for all this crazy viruses going on in our world. Yeah. The senseless killings and stuff like that. Yeah, so y'all yeah. remember seeing in your yeah. um, prayers that we'll do what God has us to do. Oh, 
to see someone down on their knees, talking to the air, words lost on the breeze. Some just see teardrops falling to the floor, just a waste of time, not
I've learned even, you know, messing around on radios or what house, you got to first turn it off. <laughs> and you got to tune it in. And then when you tune it in, you got to clarify it over here with another button to get it clear. Because if you don't, you're going to sound like everybody's talking Oriental talk. And uh, so when you tune it in, then you got a receiving coming to you plain, then you can transmit plain. But a lot of people, they get they get to broadcasting before they get to tuning in. Mm -hmm. And that's where they mess up. You <laughs> gotta get tuned in before you start broadcasting. In other words, the old saying goes, brother, our lips has done got to engage before our mind could even think about what we're gonna say. Mm -hmm. That's All right, if you have your Bibles, turn with us to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. I believe it was in Luke 17 this morning. But uh, anyhow, we over here in chapter 10 tonight. And may God bless his precious word. Uh, the, what we're going to be reading here tonight is a man had a question for Jesus. His question was, what may I do that I may have eternal life? In the 25th verse, it says, And God bless his word. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Uh, that's an unusual question coming from a lawyer, ain't it? Because you see, most times lawyers, they're so smart, they don't need nobody to tell them nothing. Right. And uh, that's the reason the Bible says, woe be unto false prophets and doctors and lawyers. But it says that was a lawyer that asked him this question. It says, what must I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, the 26th verse, what is written in the laws? How readest thou? And he answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy might, and thy neighbor as thyself. Is that so hard to understand? But when you get into the category of loving thy neighbor, and loving thy fellow man, but most of all, loving God with all your heart, with all your soul. Bless Brother, when you love God with all your heart, with all your soul, everything else is going to, all, in other words, the old saying goes, your spiritual ducks is going to fall in line. Brother, you can't have somebody ahead of God. You can't have somebody ahead of your home. You can't have, brother, you got to have everything in this perspective place. And so that's what he was telling here. He said, and he answered and said, the 27th verse, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Brother, when he says all thy heart and all thy soul, that means all. That don't mean just temporarily. That don't mean when you uh, want a benefit or something like that. No, that means uh, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, 24-7, all the time. And with all thy strength, and with all thy might, might and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. This do and thou shalt live. In other words, he's asked the question, what shall I do that I may have eternal life? Brother, you're going to do it God's way or it won't be done. It ain't your way or Burger King way. No, it's God's way or no way or other. Bless God, you're going to be left behind. God gives us simple facts in the word of God how to be saved and how to make heaven your home. And if you don't want to accept it and you want to make something out of it and you want to make it more than what it is, that ain't God's fault. That's your ears. Right. But he willingly to justify himself and said, Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus. And what you notice there, what I just read, he's willing to justify. 
justified. <coughs> Brother, you cannot justify yourself away from God's will. Brother, it don't work that way. He was willing, he's smart, he's educated, and probably just as smart as anybody can see the lawyer, and willing to justify himself. <coughs> And Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell amongst thieves, which stripped him of all his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now Jesus is using this to show the lawyer that who really cares about him. He's using this to show the lawyer that, hey, the world cares nothing about you regardless of how smart you are. Brother, he's using this to let you know that the religious crowd don't care a thing about you regardless of how, what you are or where you at. <coughs> he's using this to let him know that there's only one that really cares, and that's the good Samaritan. 31st verse, and he, and by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed on the other side. Now that priest represents the religious crowd. And when he saw the man laying there, beat half dead, stripped of half his clothes, he passed on the other side, didn't want to have nothing to do with him. And that's the way the religious crowd is. It seems like the religious crowd is me and my Thor no more. It don't work that way. Brother, no, the religious crowd, brother, a lot of them, bless God, they saved because you can be religious as anybody can be and still lost and on your way to hell. Yeah. Brother, only born again is going to heaven, not religious crowds. There's a whole lot of different denominations out here that are religious like me. Yeah, brother. But brother, that don't mean that they're born again by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. If your life don't have a desire to match up with this Bible here and do the will of God and be like God wants you to be instead of you being like you want to be, then there's something wrong with what you've got. God said if your righteousness don't exceed that of a hypocrite, you ain't got nothing. If a, if a hypocrite can get out here and put on a religious act, if they can get out here and do the things that they're supposed to be doing, and brother, if your righteousness don't exceed that of a hypocrite, brother, he said you ain't got nothing. A hypocrite can be real religious. Yeah. They can be real religious. But when they get away from the, the children of God and get out in the world, they can be just as devil as they can be too. <laughs> and likewise, 32nd verse, a Levite, he was, as it was the Levite, when he was at that place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. Mm -hmm. See, there's the world. Right there, the Levites represents the world. That's him and see, there's the world. He doesn't want to have nothing to do with him. See, what he's doing is putting a real plain example before him. Just like we try to tell you that, brother, the only way to heaven is to be saved by the grace of God. Yeah. The only way to heaven is to go Jesus' way. Ephesians 2 and 8, for by grace are you saved through faith that doesn't know of yourself. It's a gift of God, not a worse lest any man should boast. The Bible says in Romans 10 and 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So he's telling him here, who really cares? Brother, we've got some more now. A lot of people inside of the house of God, just, they've lost their compassion. They've lost their concern. They've lost their care. And brother, therefore, they don't really care like this. But a certain Samaritan, uh oh, now listen now. As he journeyed, came where he was. Samaritan, good Samaritan, coming down there, journeying on his way where he was going. He said he'd come to where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. Now we got a choice tonight in this church. We can be a good Samaritan and be a willing heart and a willing hand to help somebody. Or we can be like the religious crowd or we can be like the worldly crowd and pass by on the other side and don't care what he does. Don't care if he dies. Don't care if he goes to hell. Don't care nothing. Now that's exactly what this example is. Good Samaritan come to him. Had compassion on him. <coughs> and went unto him and bound him up. Bound up his wounds. Pouring oil and wine 
and set him upon his own beast and brought him to an end and took care of him. The good Samaritan took care of him. Put him up on his own beast and led him away. Didn't leave him there to die. Didn't leave him there to suffer. No, he bound up his wound, put oil in his wounds, and put him up on his own beast. He says, you don't have to walk. Come on, I'll take you to where we got to go. He says, and on the bar, when he departed, he took him to a place and gave him to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. In other words, whatever you spend on this poor fellow that's in such a bad shape, when I come back to pick him up, I'll pay you. I'll pay you just what you put out on him. In other words, take care of him. Don't let him go without him. Take care of him. That's compassion in the church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Compassion. Love, concern, grace, and compassion on a man. And Jesus is using this example to show that lawyer what it really means to be a good Samaritan, what it means to be somebody that really cares. Which now these three thinkest thou was neighbors unto him that fell amongst the thieves? And he said, and, and he said, he that showeth mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, uh oh, go and do thou likewise. Amen. Go and do thou likewise. Brothers and sisters, the Samaritan is Jesus. I was on my way to hell one day. Yeah, and Jesus had compassion on me. Not only did he have compassion on me, he had mercy on me. Right. Brother, he cared enough about me that he forgave me of all my sins. Right. And thank God, says Bobby, I'll give you a home in heaven. Yes, Not only did he say, I'll give you a home in heaven, he says, you have eternal life. I have eternal life from the moment that I got saved. Praise God, and here I am, 54 years down the road, I'm still got eternal life through Jesus Christ who lives in my soul. Yes, You've got Jesus in your heart. You've got eternal life. We just haven't yeah. got the body yet. We've still got this carnal earthly body. But thank God the one that lives in here, honey, he shall never die. He shall never perish. Thank God he is the one. He's the great I am. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. He's the Jehovah Jireh. And bless God, that means more than enough. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord. Go and do thy likewise. Jesus, the good Samaritan. So you see, the religious crowd, they don't care about you. The worldly crowd, they don't care about you. Now, if you've got something that they want, they do. You've got a bank of money. You've got whatever they think they can get off of you. They like you. But when it gets to where you quit handing it out, you'll find out your own family will turn against you. Now, if that ain't the truth, I ain't standing behind this poor people. That's the As long as some of your family can use you and you always got something to hand out to them, oh, yeah, you're the number one. But when you cut it off and you find out that it ain't a, it ain't a need, it's a want, then you find out who really cares. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Truth is, it is what it is. So you see, our true friend tonight is Jesus. You'll never have a friend like Jesus. Amen, sir. You want to go to heaven? Put your faith in Jesus. Yes, sir. Trust in his work on Calvary. And believe the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. And he says, if you do that, likewise, I shall have life. You know the rich young ruler that says, I have plenty. I'll turn down my barns and I'll be a bigger barn. And Jesus says, Thy food, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be? What would man give in exchange for his soul? Brother, this world's not worth going to hell over. No. This materialistic things ain't worth dying going to hell over. Some people, brother, they get down on their luck. 
they get down and they start losing everything they got. The first thing they want to do is they want to call the preachers. Preacher, I need your prayers. Preacher, pray for me. Pray for me. And then when everything gets to going good, they don't even want to talk to the preacher no more. Right. Same way people come to church. They'll come to church long enough to think they can abuse it and get a love off them and get something out of the church. And then when they get it, they don't want to know this church no more. We have that happen often right here, but you know, we give with a good heart. We give with a good heart. We give from the abundance of our heart as a church. And what they do when they walk out that door, that's between them and God. But you see, it don't take long to God will show you who they are, and then they wind up in a whole lot of trouble. They do. You can't abuse God's house. You can't abuse God's people. And you sure can't abuse God's money. That's so tonight, the good Samaritan is Jesus. He cares for you. He cares for me. All right? Let's all stand. Well, we got to play practice at the church tonight. So remember, uh, they got youth meeting to you tonight. Wednesday night service at 7 o'clock. Y'all pray for me and I'll pray for y'all the best we know how. Don't forget now the boots up here. Get something put in the boots. And we'll have a great time. Is that next Sunday morning? Next Sunday morning, next Sunday morning we're going to have a veteran's breakfast. So we'll just get something in the boots. Amen. Yeah, they never tell them. I can pull my name out. I'll pull my lid out. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.